This is the first of two videos working through sample problems on volumes by slicing. In each of these problems, we're going to have a region described, and then we're going to be revolving that region about an axis. In this case, we're talking about the area under the curve y equals 2x squared from x equals 1 to x equals 3, and we're revolving that about the x-axis. So we want to get a sketch of this region. 2x squared looks a lot like y equals x squared. It just rises a little bit more sharply. We're starting at x equals 1. We're going to x equals 3. And so the region that we're revolving looks a little something like this. And then we're spinning that around the x-axis. So what we want to think about is a representative rectangle, a little thin vertical slice of this region. And when we spin that slice around the x-axis, what we get is a disk. And so the area of the disk, in this case, is going to be pi times the radius squared. And that's just one of our slices. So we want to do that over and over and over again and add up all the slices to get our volume. So the volume ends up looking like an integral from 1 to 3, because we're starting at 1 and ending at 3, pi, and then the radius is the height of our function. So the radius here is going to be 2x squared, so we'll square that, and then we just have to integrate that with respect to x. So let's square our function. We'll pull the pi out of our integral, since it's just a constant factor. Squaring 2 gives us 4. Squaring x squared gives us x to the fourth, and now we can integrate. So we get 4 pi over 5 times x to the fifth, evaluated from 1 to 3. So we're going to plug in 3, plug in 1, and subtract. And when we do that, we end up with 968 pi divided by 5. And that's the volume of our region. Similar problem here. So now we have a region bounded by y equals negative 1 half x plus 4 and the coordinate axes. And again, we want to revolve that about the x-axis. So let's do that. So our line has slope negative 1 half and y-intercept positive 4. So this point up here is 0 comma 4. And again, our region is this triangular region here, and we want to revolve that about the x-axis. So we imagine an individual slice, and when we spin that slice around our axis, again, we get a disk. So our integral is going to be the integral from 0 to some mysterious x value. We'll figure that out in a second. Pi times our radius. Our radius is the height of that rectangle, which is just our function, negative 1 half x plus 4. We're going to square that radius, pi r squared for our area. So the only thing we haven't figured out yet for our setup of our integral is that ending x value. So what are we looking for? We're looking for where this function crosses the x-axis. So in other words, we're looking for where negative 1 half x plus 4 equals 0. So we'll subtract 4 from both sides, multiply both sides by negative 2, and that's going to give us x equals positive 8. So that's the x value that we integrate to. So now, how do we integrate negative 1 half x plus 4 all squared? Well, a couple ways to do this, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply that out. Negative 1 half x plus 4, negative 1 half x plus 4. When I FOIL that, I get positive 1 fourth x squared. Negative 1 half x times positive 4 is minus 2x. I get two of those for the O and the I of my FOIL. And then 4 times 4 is 16. So I've got pi times 1 fourth x squared. Right, I haven't actually integrated yet, so I still have an integral sign. That was just algebra that I was doing. Minus 4x, because I have two negative 2x's. And then plus 16. So that's what I'm going to integrate. So I integrate 1 fourth x squared. That's going to give me 1 twelfth x cubed. Antiderivative of 4x is 2x squared. Antiderivative of 16 is 16x. I still have a pi. And I'm integrating that from 0 to 8. So I'm going to plug in 8, plug in 0, and subtract. And cut to the chase. When I do that, I end up with 128 pi divided by 3. So now I have a few functions bounding my curve. So let's take a look at what we get here. So with the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by y equals 2x, y equals negative 1 third x plus 21, and the x-axis about, uh, and so the x-axis is bounding my area, and then I also want to revolve about the x-axis. Okay, so y equals 2x, that's going to be a line with slope 2 passing through my origin. And then negative 1 third x plus 21 is going to be a line with slope negative 1 third and y intercept 21. And then those two lines bound my area and also the x-axis bounds my area. So the area I'm looking for is this triangular shape in here. That's my region. And now I'm revolving that region about the x-axis to get a solid shape. Now, the problem here is that if I take a representative rectangle, this rectangle over here has the line y equals 2x on top. But this rectangle over here 
has y equals negative 1 third x plus 21 on top. So because my rectangles have different characters throughout this region, I'm going to have to break this up into two separate integrals. And the splitting point is going to be this point where the two lines cross. So let's find that point where they cross. I'm going to set the two lines equal to each other. 2x equals negative 1 third x plus 21. That's going to give me 7 uh, x over 3 equals 21, which is going to end up being x equals 9. So my first volume, which is rotating these red rectangles around, that's going to be, maybe I'll call that v1, will be the integral from 0 to 9, because again, I'm starting at 0 here, starting at the origin, pi times the radius squared. And for these rectangles, the radius is just my function y equals 2x. And then my second volume integral, call it v2, that's going to be the integral from 9 to wherever this point is. I'll figure that out in a second of pi times my radius squared, and this time my radius is negative 1 third x plus 21, and I'm squaring that. So the only thing I need to do to finish my setup before I actually start integrating and figuring these things out is finding the ending value for my second integral. So what I'm looking for is where does the, cur where does the line negative 1 third x plus 21, where does that equal 0? And that's going to give me x equals 63. So my second integral is going to go from 9 to 63. All right, now how do we do these integrals? Again, we're going to need to do some algebra here. So this first one's not so bad. I'm going to have to square 2x. That's going to give me 4x squared. And now that one's going to be pretty straightforward. And for the second one, this expression in here, I'll have to FOIL that. So I'll have to multiply that out just like we did that previous example. Once we do that, what we're going to end up with is that this volume v1 works out to be 972 pi. This volume v2 works out to be 5832 pi. And so then we're going to add those together to get my total volume. So my final answer to this one is 6804 times pi cubic units. All right, last example for this video. So a little bit different here because our function is defined as x as a function of y. But we've dealt with these when we did talk about area problems, so we should be able to deal with it here in the context of volume. So with the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region in the first quadrant bounded by x equals 9 minus y squared about the x-axis. All right, so what does x equals 9 minus y squared look like? Well, minus y squared would be a parabola whose vertex is at the origin that opens to the left. Adding 9 to that is going to shift that 9 units to the right, and so that's going to give me a parabola that opens to the left, but the vertex is here at the point 9 comma 0. My I'm talking about the area in the first quadrant, so the only area that I'm talking about here is that shape right there. And again, we're being told to revolve that about the x-axis. So we always want to slice, because we're looking for disks here, we always want to slice perpendicular to our axis. So even though our function is defined horizontally in that sense, where we're given x as a function of y, we still want to slice vertically. And then when we do that, we're going to get disks. So the question is, how do I describe that height of that rectangle, not as a x is a function of y, but y is a function of x. I'm still going to have to integrate with respect to x. It's still going to be pi times whatever that radius is squared, but that has to be x's. I can't put the y function in there because then I'm going to have y's and x's together in my integral. Okay, so how do I get this function written y as a function of x? I'm going to do some algebra. I've got x equals 9 minus y squared. I want to solve that for y. I'll add y squared to both sides, subtract x from both sides, take the square root of both sides. I get plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x. The minus square root, that's my bottom half parabola. I don't want that. That's not relevant to my region. The positive square root, that's this top half parabola. That's the one that I want. y equals the square root of 9 minus x. So that's the height of my rectangle. That's the radius of my disk. Now, what about the bounds of integration? Well, my integral is going to start at x equals 0, because that's the left end of my region. And it's going to end at x equals 9, because that's my uh, endpoint of my parabola. So 0 to 9, those are the bounds on my integral. And so now I'm ready to go. And this is actually fairly nice, because we had a square root, which you know isn't very pleasant, but we're immediately squaring that square root. And so this is just the integral from 0 to 9 of the function 9 minus x dx. Antiderivative of 9 is 9x. Antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared. Plug in 9, plug in 0, and subtract. And this one's going to work out to be 81 pi over 2. 
So that's it for this video. Relatively simple examples, all of them involving disks. Um, and then so in the next video in the playlist, there will be more examples of volumes by slicing where we'll get more complicated situations. So stay tuned and watch that video.